Kennedy Space Center, home of America's Space Shuttle Fleet. Nestled here on Florida's Merritt Island is the historic Launch Complex 39, where America's space program has been sending men and machines into space for over 50 years. Access to this facility is highly restricted, so it's rather difficult for the traveling public to get a good idea of the activities taking place around Kennedy Space Center. While NASA's public relations team works to get people behind the scenes at various space centers around the country, it is but a handful of those who have the privilege of doing so. In order to give adequate coverage to these events, one needs a more personal touch. Over the course of every space shuttle processing flow, a unique team of media professionals descend upon the Space Coast to witness and document these incredible events from the inner workings of the center. They come not only from the United States, but from countries all over the world. While on assignment here at Kennedy Space Center, media teams from around the globe are involved in a wide variety of tasks and events, all designed to help bring the visions and goals of the international space community into the public eye. From local news stations to foreign media websites, dozens of news agencies are represented here during space shuttle mission activities. Photographers, video producers, and journalists all come together to cover various processing milestones. From the arrival of mission payloads to the landing of the orbiter after a successful flight, all mission events are covered by the press in great detail so that the work of the space community can be fully realized and understood by the public. With so many activities surrounding any shuttle mission event, a certain amount of travel is often needed to reach the Space Center for attendance. Be it a half-hour drive from a nearby community or a plane ride that traverses half the world, members of the media go to great lengths to reach Kennedy Space Center for mission coverage. Several weeks or even months are required to plan for such a trip. Standard travel and lodging arrangements must be made as well as plans for access to Kennedy Space Center once members of the press have gathered on the Space Coast. These access plans can be made one month or more in advance depending on event criteria and approval must be obtained through KSC's Public Affairs Office. Only members working for an accredited media source, be it a national news agency or a reputable news website, will be approved for entry into the Center for Mission Coverage. Beginning in 2008, representatives of NASASpaceflight.com, or NSF, began working from the KSC press area during mission processing and flight-related press activities. Up until recently, the purpose of having NSF representatives at the KSC press site has been simple journalism and reporting. Starting in 2009, however, Additional members with various media skills began attending mission activities in an effort to expand the website's exclusive photo and video database. Members of the NASASpaceflight.com forum know this section as L2. This documentary is the culmination of the efforts of those on assignment for NASASpaceflight.com as seen through the eyes of those who were there. All footage and still photography, along with the experiences that accompanied them, were documented on location at Kennedy Space Center, unless otherwise noted, by and for NASASpaceflight.com. With so much to document while on assignment at KSC, some find it helpful to have a pre-made plan detailing documentation objectives. Photographers and videographers often plan specific shots of both hardware and scenic subject matter well in advance of their journey to the Space Center. Some of this planning is based on prior experience, while other plans are based on research and theoretical possibilities. Each event, however, presents its own unique set of challenges that sometimes cannot be anticipated. Members of the NASA spaceflight team come from three states across America. 
Brian Popka, 35, is one of the team's two native Texans and specializes in artistic, scenic, and mechanical photography around the state's capital. A veteran of three launch experiences, he began his work in space flight coverage in November 2008 with the launch of STS-126. Larry Sullivan, 51, is another team photographer who specializes in scenic photography. A resident of the Sunshine State, he joined Brian Popka in 2008 to cover the STS-126 mission here in Florida and has since added countless shuttle mission events to his list of experiences. Stephen Burgess joins the team from a little farther up the eastern seaboard. At only 20 years of age, he is the youngest member of the team. Living in Virginia, Burgess serves as the team's lead videographer and media conversion specialist and covered his first shuttle mission in 2009 as STS-129 lifted off that November. Nathan Moeller, 24, also a native of Texas, is the team's lead graphics specialist and content verification coordinator. Joining the team in 2009, Moeller covered the ferry flight of STS-128 in September of that year, as well as the launch of STS-132 in May of 2010. Rounding out the team is Florida native Chris Gebhardt, Originally and currently a reporter for NASASpaceflight.com, the 23-year-old media veteran began his service with the organization in 2008 with the launch of STS-122. Since that time, Gebhardt has served as a valuable member of the media team, assisting with video assignments of various mission milestones and press activities. When brought together, the team is a photo and video gathering powerhouse, snapping hundreds of images and shooting gigabytes of high definition footage at any given event. This film is the culmination of their work over the last two years. Every member of the media who comes to the Space Coast has a history behind their experience. As unique as the experiences are for each member of the team, so too are the stories behind how they got their start. For some, it's as simple as a lifelong passion for space flight and the desire to be involved. CollectSpace.com founder Robert Perlman recalls how he started his career in space flight coverage. Um, well, I'm a child of the shuttle. Uh, I was born in 1976. My first manned launch in my lifetime was STS-1. And so um, having the opportunity to get up and close with the space shuttle has been a, a real honor, um, even though it has happened as part of, the, uh, as part of work. Since uh, 2003, we've been covering the space shuttle program as uh, for the perspective that it's, it's history in the making. Uh, Collect Space is a space history centered site and new site and community site. And so our focus is how does the space shuttle missions that are ongoing relate to both um, what is happening now and what has happened in the past. For others at the press site, their careers have spanned multiple decades, one of whom began his work in what was seemingly the golden age of the space shuttle. January 27, 1986, saw the beginning of the illustrious career of Florida Today and USA Today space correspondent Todd Halverson. Then I came down here to uh, Florida and um, Florida Today, which is a local paper uh, here that serves the Kennedy Space Center area, offered me a job on January 27, 1986. And so I was at the Cocoa Beach Holiday Inn the next day when Challenger blew up. I don't know, it's, you have the first draft on history. Uh, what NASA does is very cool. Space exploration is just very cool. And I think it's important to our species, the human species, the human race. Um, and what's, what's the most fun about it? I don't know. It's just an important thing to cover. It's a fun thing to cover. It's a hard thing to cover because you have to take NASA and you have to translate NASA into English, which I often <laughs> tell people that that's 
you know, pretty much my job is I take NASA and I translate it into English so that the general public can understand this highly technical, you know, subject matter. Though the professionalism and ethical practices of those on site at KSC are traits to be admired, much of this behavior stems from a long career and knowledge of necessary work in broadcast media. Spaceflight Now representative David Waters describes the chain of events that led him to this point. Well, what started me off in spaceflight coverage was when I was uh, growing up in this area, I was working at science fairs, and I got an award from an astronaut, Mae Jameson. She handed out science fair awards, and I thought, oh, that's really nice. Let me look more into this uh, space stuff, and I was a little kid then. And I, I watched all these rockets from my backyard. My family would come outside, and we'd watch all the unmanned launches and all the space shuttle launches growing up. So, you know, one thing led to another, and eventually I started calling up the press side and saying, hey, can I come out here when I was a teenager? And I said, I'll cover it for local radio stations. And I did, and that was fun. And eventually it led me into TV. It led me there to covering the shuttle for uh, more than a decade. And then it led me to working inside the space shuttle program for a little bit as a spokesperson. And then now coming back out for the last launches as media. So just having been part of this and growing up in this community and getting to see it, that got me so excited that that ended up putting me in this place right here today.